back in those days, only Negroes on a Pullman car were Pullman porters. <laughs> so I was told when I got on that Pullman car, don't get off it, because the car I was in was going through to California. Because the moment I got off that Pullman car, I would not be able to get back on. So I went from Boston to Biloxi, Mississippi. I never got off it. I was the only one who arrived in Biloxi, Mississippi in a Pullman car. I, I was lucky. Keel's luck would change when he was sent to Midland, Texas for bombardier training and was greeted by a white officer named Lieutenant Colonel Phelps who laid out the rules for black soldiers in his camp. One, we could not eat in the officer's mess hall. Two, we could not go in the officer's club. Three, if we go to the theater, we could not sit in the officer's section. And four, if we go to town, we had to ride the back of the bus. Keel and his fellow soldiers challenged Phelps on his mess hall discrimination and won, but the cost was high. He failed in his court martial, but he promised every white officer on the base he would give him those Negroes as the last thing he ever did. And Phelps tried to even the score by getting them sent to the Pacific as navigators. In those days, there was no way in hell the Army's going to let a black navigator tell a white pilot where to go. So instead, it was off to Tuskegee, Alabama, where African Americans were being trained as pilots. And that suited Keel just fine because airplanes didn't intimidate him. If you can drive a car, you can fly a plane. The only difference between the two one before I went in was, was taking the thing up off the ground and putting it back down again. And as far as I'm concerned, I didn't see where anybody should have any trouble taking that thing off the ground and putting it back. That's the attitude I had. But the racist attitude of his white commanding officer and his reports to the Pentagon posed yet another obstacle. The Negroes were good pilots, but he figured that they would not, mentally, they would not be able to take it if they came under fire. That made Keel even more determined. When the other white groups would go on weekends in town to have a ball, we stayed on the campus, on the base, studying to make sure that we didn't let no one down. They worked and worked to succeed for a chance to serve a country that tolerated the abuse, the discrimination, the hatred to which they were constantly subjected. They hoped maybe their success could bring about change, but that brought with it a heavy burden. We knew that if we messed up, it would be reflection on all of us, all Negroes. So we had to do good. Keel did better than good. His performance was remarkable. When I got my wings, I became the first and only triple rated flight officer in the whole entire United States Army Air Force. Keel's bomber group was scheduled to go overseas in September of 1945, but in August, the war came to an end. Daniel Keel, who had battled racism in his effort to battle the Nazis, returned home, only to endure more racism. So I went to college and I studied electrical. I got myself a master electrician, and when I applied for the job, the first thing, most when you apply for jobs back in those days, most of the time, it was over the telephone. And the first thing they asked you was your nationality. When they found out that you're Negro, that took care of that. Oh. 